I work for a local entrepreneurial firm here in Singapore called Newton Circus. And Newton Circus builds technology platforms to address social and environmental issues. So we're at the intersection of technology and sustainability. We don't build technology or uh, crowdfunding or crowdsourcing platforms uh, like you've been hearing about this morning, but I have run a couple of campaigns, including Silver Line Smartphones for Seniors, which at its time was the largest crowdfunding campaign in Asia. And I got into crowdfunding because I do a lot of work in Myanmar, introducing new technologies to entrepreneurs there. And crowdfunding was one of those new technologies because it truly is a leapfrog technology where people in Myanmar have traditionally relied on funding from very close-knit uh, family networks. Bank loans are nearly impossible to get. Um, investors from overseas, impossible due to regulations. So crowdfunding is a great way for entrepreneurs in Myanmar to get the funding they need. And that's how I got started. All right. Yep. So I'm going to be talking about crowdfunding for social good. And um, crowdfunding for social good uses donation-based crowdfunding and rewards-based crowdfunding rather than the equity-based crowdfunding uh, you've heard about uh, this morning. So crowdfunding, as it's been mentioned earlier, is not just about raising the money, but it's also a great way to um, prototype and test your concept, and also to raise awareness and build your community. But without further ado, I actually want to introduce you to one of my uh, favorite crowdfunding campaigns, Who Gives a Crap? And this is from a social enterprise based in Melbourne, Australia. And they raised $66,000, and they did everything right. So the question I'm going to answer, or one of the questions I'm going to answer here today is, well, why didn't they raise $660,000 rather than $66,000? We reckon every trip to the bathroom should be a feel-good experience. So we've spent the last two years developing the only toilet paper that delivers one every time. Who gives a crap? It's a breakthrough on so many levels. Let me take you through them. It's better for the environment, and we've cut the nasties, so it's better for your body. That feels good. But unlike other recycled toilet paper, we're all about comfort. So it has a beautiful fluffy texture and low PTR, or poke through rate. That feels good. You can choose to buy it off the shelf or have it home delivered. Either way, it costs the same as other brands, but comes with 1200% more puns. That feels good. But here's where we're really on a roll. 50% of our profits go to sanitation projects in the developing world. You see, while a trip to the bathroom can be the ultimate feel-good experience for some, for many, it's not. Because 2.4 billion people don't have access to a proper toilet. The bad stuff ends up in waterways, causing diseases that fill half the hospital beds in the developing world. That doesn't feel very good. And that's why we're donating 50% of our profits to WaterAid. WaterAid helped the world's poorest people access clean water, sanitation, and hygiene education. They're literally saving the world from the bottom up. It's as simple as that. We take something that everybody needs and use the proceeds to help people in need. And that feels really good. Heading up to Gives a Crap and Jehan Ratnatan in LA, Danny Alexander in New York, and myself down in Melbourne, Australia. We're engineers and product designers who in 2010, through a shared passion for humanitarian aid and toilet humour, developed a business model that grabbed a lot of headlines and won a bunch of awards for entrepreneurship. We're busting Prescott on the first production run and create Who Gives a Crap's first edition. Our feel-good toilet paper needs a feel-good price. And for that, we have to order in bulk. But we need $50,000 to make that happen. Basically, we need toilet paper. And like anyone who's waiting for toilet paper, we need someone to help us out. We're asking for your support. We need $50,000 to fill our warehouse with the first bulk order of Who Gives a Crap. And I won't be leaving this toilet until we've raised enough for our first order. I'm sitting down for what I believe in, and I'm not getting up until I've got some toilet paper. 
$50,000 worth. Till then, you can jump on our website and see me sitting right here on our live feed. So, bit of help. So you can see that they did everything right. They had a great video, a brilliant pitch. They had a solid international team, a solid international uh, following from years of work before the crowdfunding campaign even got launched. So the question is, why didn't they raise hundreds of thousands of dollars? And the short answer, I'll argue, is that we saw uh, the three tiers, which go from friends and family to tribe followers to rational investors. And social good crowdfunding campaigns have a very difficult time breaking into that third category of rational investors. It's extremely difficult to tap, and only a few campaigns do. And those social good campaigns are actually ones where the beneficiaries of the project are actually the people who are contributing to the campaign themselves. Um, so this is just uh, a quick graph of some of the uh, top campaigns in Asia. The yellow ones are uh, not specifically social good campaigns. The blue ones are specifically social good campaigns. And you can see both of them have been going up uh, steadily starting in uh, January of this year. And this is actually a really interesting example, section 377A challenge um, is about a court case dealing with homosexuality in Singapore, and it's the largest social good crowdfunding campaign um, in Asia by far, and that's a great example of one where the contributors or some of the contributors are actually gaining something, a self-interested um, result based on their contribution. So I mentioned that crowdfunding for social good is predominantly uh, donation and rewards-based. There are a lot of great uh, donation and rewards-based platforms out there. Um, Kickstarter, Pausable in Australia, Crowdonomic here in Singapore. But most of the social good campaigns use Indiegogo, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, solid international exposure. Two, flexible funding uh, platforms or flexible funding payments. And third, uh, Indiegogo does not have regulations about who can submit a campaign. So both Kickstarter and Pausable, for example, require that campaigns be creative projects, whatever that means. Uh, Indiegogo, on the other hand, will take anyone. If you're starting a business, if you're running a charity program, they'll take you. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's a number of reasons for crowdfunding in addition to the funds themselves. And this is one of, um, this is an interesting campaign which I actually advised on, and ultimately they were unsuccessful. Um, they have a great video, a great pitch, a compelling story, but they didn't have the team or the international network in place. They actually thought that they would be a lot like Rebecca Black, that you could just put your video on the internet and instantly you would become famous. But that's not right. Crowdfunding takes a lot of strategic work, uh, it takes a lot of energy, and even more so with social good campaigns.
So in the interest of time, I'm actually going to stop it there. But this was a campaign which was run uh, exclusively by uh, Myanmar's from Myanmar. They only had one person on their entire team who spoke English, and that was the person who provided the subtitles. And they um, had a great idea, tons of passion and energy, but they didn't have the international team or the international networks to really uh, get their video and their concept out there. I'm also going to show you the crowdfunding campaign which I led earlier this year, uh, Silverline Smartphones for Seniors. And Silverline Smartphones for Seniors has two components, so it's kind of a hybrid social good and self-interest. Hi, I'm Leland and this is Jason. I would like to introduce you to Silverline. It's a new project that creates apps that are custom designed for seniors. We have spent the last 18 months working with underserved seniors, providing them with donated secondhand smartphones and building apps to address their needs. It's amazing the improvement is made to the quality of their lives, but we're just scratching the surface. There's so much more that we can do. We want to bring this to our parents and our grandparents and let them have access to the smartphone revolution. We've already created a suite of five apps, from a simple picture-based contact list to a health app with medication reminders and a fun photo app to keep seniors active. We have plans to create even more apps focused on health and well-being, connecting families, education, and emergency services. We've already started a game that can detect cognitive decline and a personal safety app which will detect a fall and automatically notify a caregiver. Silverline was originally created as a charity program here in Singapore. We encouraged people to donate their secondhand smartphones, installed the apps, and gave them to underserved seniors. Singtel, the largest service provider here in Singapore, was generous enough to donate 1,000 voice and data plans to the program. So now we want to build on our successes and create even more apps for seniors, all seniors, not just the underserved, but for our parents and our grandparents. And we have lots of great ideas and some working prototypes already in the works. But we're going to need at least $50,000 to make the next suite of apps happen. Of course, the more money we raise, the more apps we can make. If you have a parent or grandparent who could benefit from these apps, or simply think that Silverline is a good idea, please help us get our project funded. It's the generosity of people like you who will make this project a reality, to put technology in the hands of our seniors and make their lives as happy and healthy as they can be. Thank, Thank you. you. To run this campaign, we actually took a page from Tim Ferriss' playbook. How many of you know Tim Ferriss? Uh, for our work week, for our body. I love him because he's the perfect combination of thoughtful intellectual and cocky SOB. Um, and his principles, how to raise $100,000 on Kickstarter in 10 days, were the guiding principles for our crowdfunding success. And these are his principles for success. Uh, minimum effective dose, outsource and automate as much as possible, and prep and pick up. And I'm only going to address this last one, but the analogy is when you're uh, watching a cooking show and you see the chef put together the recipe, it looks so easy, right? Add a little flour, a little butter, voila, it's done. In reality, you're sitting there watching the television set, trying to sift the flour, trying to measure out the butter. And the reason why it's so easy for the chef is because they've already prepped and they're just picking up. And that's exactly what we did. I'm going to run through this quickly. Um, the most important part is actually templating everything beforehand. Even before you launch your campaign, have every single email, every single Facebook update, every single LinkedIn share ready to go. Also, pre-schedule your emails in advance. Um, Pre-scheduling your emails with a program like Boomerang for Gmail allows you to pre-schedule them and set them off exactly at the same time your crowdfunding campaign launches. So there's a flood of emails which hits your friends and family and all of your social networks the second your campaign gets started. That way, 
you're not frantically hammering out emails in the early hours of your campaign. Throwing a launch party is also a great way to build momentum. It's a way to get your friends and family uh, to participate and feel a part of the team, but also, trust me, once they're in the room and they've had a couple beers, they're pulling out their credit card. <laughs> Non-stop status updates, and this is really easy because you've already pre-written and pre-scheduled all of this. And my last point is that crowdfunding is tons of work. Do not underestimate how much time and energy it will be for your team. And lastly, do not underestimate how much time and energy it will take to fulfill the rewards. If you offer rewards, um, getting them out the door is excruciating. And we've seen that time and time again, even with the most successful uh, Kickstarter campaigns, such as Pebble Watch. There's been delay after delay in terms of actually shipping the product. So make sure you get this figured out before launching your crowdfunding campaign so you can actually deliver on your promises. Thank you very much.